Hello, in this video, we're going to find the maximum of f of x equals x to the a times one minus x to the b over the interval zero comma one, where a and b are both positive numbers. Let's go ahead and carefully work through this problem solution. So to maximize a function on a closed interval like this, you have to first find the critical numbers, and then what you do is you plug in the critical numbers and the endpoints, in this case zero and one, into your original function. And the biggest number we get is going to be the max. We're gonna start by finding the critical numbers. So let's take the derivative. To do that, we're going to use something called the product rule. Well, the product rule says if you have two functions, say f and g, and you want the derivative of that product, think of f as your first function and g as your second function. It's the derivative of the first times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second. So this is the product rule from calculus. We're gonna apply it here to this problem. This is our first function. This is our second function. All right, let's go ahead and do it. So f prime of x. So taking the derivative of the first, which is x to the a, we use the power rule. So we'll bring down the a. And we have x, and then we subtract one from the exponent, so a minus one times the second, so one minus x to b, plus the first, which is x to the a, times the derivative of the second. So here we use the power rule and the chain rule. So we bring down the b, leave the inside piece untouched, which is one minus x, subtract one from the exponent, so you get b minus one, and times the derivative of the inside function, well, the derivative of one is zero, the derivative of negative x is negative one. Again, the derivative of the first, so we brought down the a, subtract one from the exponent, times the second, so that's one minus x to the b, plus the first, which is x to the a, times the derivative of the second piece, which involves the chain rule, so you bring down the b, subtract one from the exponent, leave the inside piece untouched, then you multiply it by the derivative of the inside. We wanna set this equal to zero. All right, so keep going. So now, f prime of x equal to, at this point we're going to factor. So let's factor out things that have the smallest exponents. So let's start with the x to the x terms. We have x to the a minus one and we have x to the a. Well, x to the a minus one is smaller, so you wanna factor that out. So I'm going to write it x to the a minus one because it has the smaller exponent, right? That's what I meant to say. You wanna factor out the pieces that have the smallest exponent. Now we have one minus x to the b and one minus x to the b minus one. Well, b minus one is smaller than b. We're gonna pull this one out, one minus x to the b minus one. I'm gonna put a bracket here. And so now we're actually going to factor. So first I wrote down what I was gonna factor out. So this one and this one, that's what we factored out. I wrote them here so I won't write them, underline them anymore. All right, so how do we get this piece? What's missing? Well, we need the a, and we've already got x to the a minus one. Here we have one minus x to the b, and here we have one minus x to the b minus one. So what do we multiply by one minus x to the b minus one to get one minus x to the b? Well, that would be one minus x to the one, right? Because when you multiply one minus x to the one, times one minus x to the b minus one, you add the exponents. b minus one plus one is b, boom. And then here we have a minus, there's this lingering minus sign. We have the b. And we pulled out this whole term here, this one minus x to the b minus one. We have an x to the a here. Here we have an x to the a minus one. So what do we need here? We need an x to the one. Because when you multiply x to the one times x to the a minus one, you add the exponents, a minus one plus one, is a. Pretty tough, pretty tough, it's not easy. This is a little bit harder for people because it has variables, but this factoring trick is something you've known your whole life. You know, if you have x to the fourth minus x squared, which one do you factor out? Well, you factor out x squared, and we'll look at that. It's the one that has the smaller exponent. So it's something that you've, you've always done, it's just when you're doing it here because the exponents are weird, it seems harder. Um, so now we have a product equal to zero, so we can set each piece equal to zero. So we have x to the a minus one, each factor equal to zero. 
that's zero, or we have one minus x to the b minus one equal to zero, or we have all of this equal to zero. Okay, so this is a times one minus x minus bx equal to zero. So we have a product, three factors equal to zero, so you set each fact factor equal to zero. This one has an easy solution, it's just gonna be zero. It's one of our answers, or one of our critical numbers. Actually, um, yeah, we're gonna test this point anyways because it's an endpoint, so it's kind of um, not really relevant. Here we're gonna get one. So again, this is one of our endpoints because we're on the interval zero, one, so that's not really relevant. It's not gonna help us in any way. And then, so here we have hopefully a different number. Let's distribute the a. So a times one is a. a times x is ax. We have a minus and then minus bx, and this is equal to zero. We're trying to solve for x, so it looks like we can pull out uh, a negative x here. So we have a minus x, parentheses, a plus b, right? Negative x times a is negative ax, negative x times b is negative bx, and that's equal to zero. We can subtract away this a. So we have negative x, parentheses, a plus b, equal to negative a. And now we can divide both sides by negative parentheses a plus b, and then negative parentheses a plus b. And that leaves us with a very cool answer, or a very cool critical number, rather, of x equals a over a plus b. And we, we, should, we should verify that this is uh, in our interval, right? So it has to be between 0 and 1. That's kind of important. So A and B are positive, so it's certainly positive because we have a fraction where the numerator is positive and the denominator is positive because the sum of positive numbers is positive. So it's positive or positive, so everything's positive. Uh, we just have to show that it's less than or equal to 1. You could do that by saying, hey, this is less than or equal to A over A, which is 1. And you can do that because A plus B is bigger uh, than A, so it makes the fraction here on the left smaller. And it's positive, again, because it's a quotient with a positive numerator and positive denominator. So, so this number is actually between zero and one. So now all we have to do is check each of these numbers, zero, one, and this number here. We have to plug them into our original function, and the biggest answer we get is going to be our maximum. Okay, so I'm gonna write down the original function again, because you can't see it on the screen. So it was f of x equals, and it was x to the a, parentheses, 1 minus x to the b. All right, let's do it. So plugging in 0, do it over here. It's a different color. Let's use yellow. The f of 0 is equal to 0 to the a, and then 1 minus 0 to the b. It's going to be 0 times 1, which is 0. Then f of 1, that's also going to be 0, right? Because we put a 1 here, 1 minus 1 is 0, but I'll write it 1 to the a. And then 1 minus 1 to the b, 1 times 0, which is 0. And last and certainly not least, uh, perhaps uh, the most interesting answer, which is going to give us the max, uh, is f of a over a plus b. What is that going to be? So this is our x, so it'll be parentheses a over a plus b for the a. And um, here, we're going to get parentheses 1 minus a over a plus b, and all of this is to the b. Let's clean this up. We can certainly do that. We have that f of a over a plus b is equal to, this is going to be a to the a over a plus b to the a. So it's a to the a over a parentheses a plus b to the a. That a looks really weird. I don't know why I made it so big. <laughs> Sorry. And then here we can do some subtraction. You can think of one as a plus b over a plus b like this. This is a plus b minus a over a plus b. So I skipped a step here because I think of, think of one as a plus b over a plus b. And then you have the same denominator, and you could subtract, right? Like we did here, a plus b minus a all over a plus b. The a's cancel. Keep going. So this is going to be equal to 
a to the a over a plus b to the a. And then here, this is going to be b to the b over a plus b to the b. Okay. And this is equal to a to the a, b to the b over, and then here we have a common base, so we add the exponents, a plus b to the a plus b. And that's going to be bigger than zero. Everything's positive, so this is going to be our maximum. There is one thing I forgot to mention. It's not going to affect our answer, but it's something that I should have mentioned or you should at least think about, and you probably don't know what it is, so I'm going to show you because it's really a little bit sneaky. Um, up here, when we're finding the critical numbers, so here, and we take this derivative, uh, remember critical numbers are numbers in the domain of the original function, which in this, in this case is function, its domain is, well, it's 0, 1, we're restricting it, but there's no issues. Um, such that um, the derivative is undefined or equal to zero. So you do have to ask the question, you know, is the derivative undefined anywhere? It could be the case that this derivative is undefined because let's say a is 0 0.1, right? If a is 0 0.1, then this is going to be 0 0.1 minus 1. It's going to be negative 0 0.9. You get x to the negative 0 0.9, which is 1 over x to the 0 0.9. So it's undefined at zero. But that's okay because we took care of that it's the same number you get by setting it equal to zero. Same thing here. This could be undefined at one if b is a number, you know, smaller than one. That, that could happen, right? Because b is positive, but if it's, if it's smaller than one, um, there's going to be an issue at one. But that's okay because we got one anyways, right? Um, so that's something to um, be aware of. So it doesn't affect our answers because we got those numbers to check anyways. So we don't know what a and b are, so we don't know if it's undefined or not at zero or at one, we, we just don't know. But it doesn't matter because even if the derivative wasn't defined there, um, everything still works because we get the same numbers to check and we get the same result either way. So just a really subtle point uh, regarding finding the critical numbers. Kind of a challenging problem. Hopefully this video has helped someone, someone out there in the world. Anyways, good luck.